Hey, this is your first video for weather and climate. So we ended the unit, last unit in the universe, really focusing on electromagnetic waves and electromagnetic spectrum. And we looked at how those waves can give us the properties and specific characteristics that we know. So this unit, we're gonna focus on weather and climate and really focus on how the sun's energy. Hello, Mr. Santiago. How hey. are you? Hi, everybody. <laughs> This is gonna be on the test, write this down. Okay, so we're gonna look at how the sun's energy impacts the Earth's systems, particularly weather and climate. So this is called energy in the atmosphere, this first video. So let's review about the sun's energy. The sun's energy travels to Earth in the form of electromagnetic waves, because remember, electromagnetic waves do not require matter to travel. So radio all the way to gamma comes to us from the sun. The difference is with the electromagnetic radiation, some of our atmospheric layers are going to interact with that radiation and keep it from getting to us. So the harmful gamma and x-rays aren't going to make it through our atmosphere, whereas some of the ultraviolet will, but all of the visible light all the way down to radio is going to make it to our surface. About 30% of the sun's energy is reflected back in, out into space. We don't even get an opportunity to come in contact with it. So of the rest of that, 70% that gets through, about a quarter of it is absorbed by what's on the surface of the earth. So water, organisms, land, buildings, etc. Other parts of that 70% are going to be absorbed into the atmosphere. So why is that such a big deal and why can we live on the planet earth? Well, in the atmosphere, there are gases. We say that the atmosphere is made up of air. Well, what exactly is air? We, we learned in chemistry that air is a mixture. So there are gases that make up our atmosphere that some of their properties are they can trap heat. They interact with the radiation and they trap the heat. So examples of those, they're called greenhouse gases, would be methane, water vapor, nitrous oxide, and carbon dioxide. There's also something called CFCs. Three of these, methane, water vapor, actually four of these, methane, water vapor, nitrous oxide, and carbon dioxide, are found naturally in the atmosphere. CFCs are chlorofluorocarbons, and we'll come to those a little bit later, but they're not natural. Basically, these gases are going to trap the right amount of heat that's coming in and going out to keep our planet at a comfortable global temperature. Sometimes you'll hear the Earth being referred to as the Goldilocks planet. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just right. So here you'll see a picture of the waves coming in, the radiation coming in, and some of that radiation gets reflected back up and it leaves, but the right amount or the equal amount is kept in the atmosphere and it keeps our planet warm. So this is what we call our Earth's energy budget. What is coming in, the energy that's coming in is equal to the energy that's let off and the energy that's stored. So what happens if we add to these natural greenhouse gases? Because we have about 7 billion people on the planet. So anything from driving cars to burning oil and coal, cutting down trees to make sure that we have enough space and enough um, development, using aerosol spray cans and solvents and refrigerants, all of these things are going to add to those naturally occurring greenhouse gases that are already in our atmosphere. Well, if I have more gases, then I've got more interaction with the radiation. So more heat is being trapped than what's actually being allowed out and what's being saved. So more heat that's trapped equals a higher global temperature. This is what we call global warming. A change in global temperatures are going to impact several of our Earth's systems. And in this unit, we're going to focus on particularly weather and climate. So here's a picture. If I have the radiation coming in and the blue wave looking line is a thicker atmosphere of those greenhouse gases, you can clearly see that there's more heat that's being trapped. Now this week we're going to focus on greenhouse gases and the greenhouse effect and global warming. And you guys are going to get to watch a video at the end of the week called Too Hot Not to Handle. And you're going to get to see ways that you as an eighth grader can actually keep some of this from happening. And ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap.